Wow, he's kind of a creepy looking guy. Flying Skelepod. Welcome back, everybody, to Osiris New Dawn in the Discovery Update. I am an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we have a lot of stuff to do. So I spent, I don't know, about an hour or so off camera just doing a whole bunch of mining. So we got a bunch of ores and stuff, and we're in pretty good shape uh, ore-wise. Uh, so this is what we have here uh, in these chests. I went out and got a bunch of copper because I was low on copper. We got some gold. We got some iron. We got a little bit of titanium, a little bit of molybdenum. And so, yeah, we're in pretty good shape on that. Uh, we need to do some gases today too. So we're going to, we're going to show you that, uh, but let's start with points before we do anything else. So we're going to hit F6, go into the points menu and, uh, we have 10 stat points. Yeah. You can tell I've been doing a whole hell of a lot of mining. So let's do some health. Let's do some strength. Let's do some stamina and then, uh, put, uh, 20 points into uh, to strength and one more point into health. Okay, so we have 15, 20, 12 uh, ratio there. Okay, so we have 77 combat, 99 engineering, and 111 science. Yeah, I've been a busy guy. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and finish out craft faster. Uh, we got the max out hover booster, so I want to get the increased loot. And then we we'll really just have repair at higher durability and suit breach. So let's go max those out. And we just have these two suit breaches left and then we're done with engineering. Okay, so for science, we want to get increased fruit yield. And then we might as well take the spacewalk and we are done with science. See what I mean? You know, when I was saying that you get all these done in the mid game and they really should go longer. But anyway... Uh, let's do increased projectile damage and weapon durability. Let's see, what is this? Uh, oh, no, that's suit breach. What's this? Oh, that's craft at higher health. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's The icon looks really similar. So, okay, let's go with gun durability and weapon durability. And we're out of points. Okay, so we just have three these three more to do in combat and two more to do here in engineering. Very good. Okay, that's out of the way. Uh, I went ahead and made myself a the spanner, um, mechanized spanner, because I, I did a little salvaging off camera, and man, this thing is a beast. I will demonstrate it to you, but yeah, it's even faster than the wrench. Really, really good stuff. So yeah, we'll take a look at that. And so let's see. We, I want to get some, some liquid tanks going uh, so that we can actually consolidate our water. We got a bunch of food to make too. Let's get that going because it's going to take a little while for it to cook. So in here, this one, this is my food container. And so you can see I got a full stack of meat and then some more. And then we got a whole bunch of crab meat, which we'll be able to use later. So we're just going to grab the crab meat now. And I'm just going to make a whole mess of meat stews, but we have to first cook those out here. So let's go to our furnace. At some point, I do need to make some more furnaces. Uh, this is something new, too, that I noticed. You can do uh, charred alien bits, uh, which only takes one tissue, but only gives you eight nutrition. So we want to go with the actually gr actual grilled meat. We're, gonna be, we're going to be able to make 35 of those, which means then we can make 35 of the stews. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, let's go back in here for a minute. I want to put, uh, or I want to grab some stuff out of here, too. So let's put this stuff back. Now, um... We want to grab all of our scrap stuff and turn that all into components uh, because we are going to need them. So everything else in here is normal. We need to make some rubber and we're completely out of plastic. So we're going to do that as well. Let's go on back outside here. And I have in here, yeah, let's put the LCDs in there for the moment. Uh, we're not going to grab this extra wire here because it takes two. But what we can do is come here and make some uh, five wires, as a matter of fact, from that scrap. And if we go to the furnace, we should be able to make a little more rubber and a little more plastic from the scrap that we have. Okay, very good. So let's grab that one piece of plastic. We're going to wait for the rubber because we're going to need it. And then, uh, yeah, the food's just about done. Okay, so that takes care of stuff that we can make, you know, from, from what we salvage. I didn't salvage a lot. I mostly mined. 
Um, and these these crabs are, you know, as much of a pain in the neck as they are, and trust me, they are a pain in the neck. They're also kind of a blessing because, um, you know, the free meat, right? Now here's something I haven't that I've noticed. I've mentioned to you guys a couple of times, I think, that it's hard to get to the crab's head when you're harvesting. But it seems to me that either they fix that, and maybe that's the case. I haven't really tested it. But if I hit the head first before I do the body, see, see how it says head harvestable? I can get to it, and then I can do the body later. My guess is that they just fix it, because I haven't tested it the other way. But if they haven't, then it seems like if you hit the head first... Uh, before you do the body, then you can get all of it um, and, you know, harvest the entire crab. But we're going to have to test. Yeah, see, now it sinks into the ground. We're going to have to test that because, again, maybe they just fixed it. We are going to get that rover fixed up, too. That's on the list. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to do, man. All kinds of stuff on the list. Okay, so what are we doing? Um, We're going to... Yeah, let's grab the food out of here. So we got 35 pieces of meat. That's pretty good. We're going to take that in here and make a bunch of stews. Now, I've got water, just crazy amounts of water. Um, and part, So that's partly why I want to get the liquid take going so I can get these all consolidated. All right, so now we have 35 things of cooked meat. So let's go into here, and we're just going to queue up uh, nine meat stews because we need more water. Okay, so let's just grab more water here. I was going to say, we should have been able to make more than that. There we go. 34. So that's going to be decent food. That's good mid-game food. And that also gives us a bunch of empty jars, which is a good thing because we actually need those for some other crafting that we have to do. We're going to stick those empty glass containers in here for the moment. All right, let's put this stuff back in here for the moment. So we've got nine rubber and just one plastic. So plastic is is definitely what we're going to need. We got two circuit boards out of the deal, so that's not too bad. And so yeah, let's take a look at making plastic and rubber straight up. First, we have to get rid of our friend Bloom there. So let's go out to to this uh, the chemistry station. And if we have put my light on here, okay. So to make plastic, we need sulfur, lead, and methane. So, do I have an empty jar here? I don't. Should have grabbed one of those with me. I like the airlock. It's fun, but it is kind of a pain in the butt because you have to wait for it to open the doggone door. <laughs> it's all right, though. It's all good. It's all good. All right, so we need methane. We have a full thing of methane here because we made the precipitation collector. I told you guys this was going to come in handy later. So we could probably fill the whole thing up here. So basically, when you're getting liquids or gases in this game, you do liquids with the glass containers, you do gases with the barrels, and we'll look at that too. But basically, you just put it in your hand, and then you extract it with the F key. Okay, so now we have a full thing of methane in our hand. Okay, now what we want to do is go to the chem station, and we also need, for plastic, we also need uh, sulfur and lead. So let's go over here. And we've got sulfur and lead in one of these guys. Okay, there's lead. And there's sulfur. Whoops. Now we should be able to cook ourselves up some plastic. So that'll give us five uh, pieces. Really, that's all we get is five? Yeah, we need more methane. <laughs> now, the other way you can get methane in the game is you can... Uh, there's several methane pools around... Yeah, there's se there, there are several methane pools around the map. Um, there used to only be one, but now they added more. So if you find them, you can take the jars, a bunch of these empty jars, and go fill up on the methane. Or the other way to do it is to make a whole bunch of furnaces and then just, you know, let it collect over time. So either way is a good method to do it. Um, so hopefully that's all the plastic we need. If it isn't, then we're going to actually have to do that. We're going to have to go hike over to one of those places and get some methane. But, you know, I'm kind of tired of hiking, guys. I really am, I have to be honest with you. So I think maybe our next course of action needs to be to fix up the rover. However, before we can we can fix the rover, that's part of the equation. But the other part is that we need hydrazine uh, fuel to actually power the rover. So I think before we do that, 
we should get our liquid tank set up so that we can consolidate our water so that we have some empty jars to make hydrazine in. And then we're gonna have to go get nitrogen and hydrogen to make the hydrazine. Okay, so let's do that. This is gonna be an episode about gas, among other things. Okay, but not bad gas. We're talking about good gas here. The good kind. Okay, so um, let's see. Where are we at with our food? Okay, let's grab that. So that's a nice little chunk of food for us. And we want to make a, a, a tank, right? So we're going to go to utilities. We, we might as well make a gas tank too so we can store some extra hydrogen. But the liquid tank is the one I actually want the most at the moment. So we need aluminum, computer screen, aluminum hose, and iron. Let's go get that stuff. Okay, guys, we have enough stuff now to make our two tanks, a gas tank and a liquid tank. Uh, so I think what we'll do is let's put those um, off over this way for now. So the thing you need to know about the tanks is that they do have an LCD on it right there. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. Stupid crap. Okay, so I harvested the crab's body before his head, and now look, I can't get to the head. So, yeah, it looks like that's the deal. So if you guys want to crab the entire... Or crab. <laughs> if you guys want to harvest the entire crab, you got to hit the head before you hit the body, because now I can't... It doesn't give me the option to do the head. Really weird. Okay, well, hopefully they fix that at some point. Um. All right, we were working on our tank. So let's come over here and go to F2, go to utilities. And let's do the gas tank first because it's a little bit larger. But what I was saying is there is an L there's two things you need to know. There's an LCD um, thing on here, which you want to be able to see because it tells you, you know, how much is in the tank. Uh, so there's that. But there's also... You also, it's kind of weird, you also have to fill the tank up near the LCD screen, at least the last time I tried this, unless they fix it. So you want to give yourself enough room to be able to do that. Um, so you have to be, so you can't fill it from the end. You'd think you, you, you'd you be able to, but you have to be, can you do it over here too? Uh-uh. So you have to be like right in this in this area, this center area, to actually you know fill it or extract from it. So don't make sure you don't block it. What it will do though is it'll tell you how much and what kind of fuel you have in it, which is really useful. All right, let's go back to utilities, and this time we're going to do the liquid tank. Same idea. We're going to flip it this way, but we don't want it all the way up against there because then we'll have a hard time getting in there. Um, so let's just hold this over here, about right here. Now, these two tanks are requirements or they're prerequisites to build a habitat if you're going to build a habitat, um, you know, from scratch, basically. So because we already had the frame of the habitat in place, we didn't have to do that. But if you're going to build from scratch, you have to have those two down amongst other prerequisites, which the game will tell you. In fact, if you go into the structures, see all this stuff in the red is what it tells you you have to have in place before you can build that particular item. Uh, so, for example... Oh, you know what? We do need to make the oxygenator. I didn't think it was going to require that, but we do need to make that for the biome, uh, the biodome. So, okay. Well, we'll be doing that then. I didn't think we needed that, but we do. All right. So let's see. We've made the tanks. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to grab all the water in the whole friggin' world that we have. But before I do that, I'm going to have to drop some stuff off because I'm super heavy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, while I still have all the mats in my inventory, maybe we should... Go ahead and see if we can make that oxygenator now, since it is going to be a requirement for the biodome. Uh, and we're going to put that oxygenator right here. Uh, so we need to get that stuff out of there. And let's um, get our spanner on our toolbar. Unfortunately, we're going to have to destroy this because we're going to have to put the oxygenator there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so to do the oxygenator, let's go to F2 to appliances. And we're going to need to make a computer screen a circ and a circuit board. We got everything else. Okay, so a computer screen and a circuit board. Okay, so to make the circuit board, we need a dime alloy and a power cell. 
but we're going to need to make two of these because we need one for the computer screen as well. So we need two dime alloys and two power cells. Let's do it. Okay, let's press F2, go to appliances, select the oxygenator, and put it in place. So we do need that to make the biodome work. Now, you, uh, the oxygenator and the climate controller, you, you don't do anything with these. There's, there's no way to interact with them. They're just there doing their, their thing. They're there doing their thing. Uh, we still need to get the chem bench set up, too. Let's also get that knocked out just because I've got all the Lutskis in my inventory. So let's do that next. So the chem's tables. We need two talonites, another computer screen, and a dime alloy. Okay, let's press F2, go to utilities, select the, I'm sorry, appliances, go to the chem bench, and let's build ourselves a chemistry bench station thingamadoodle. Now, this guy, we can make carbon in here from organic sludge, which we'll figure out when we do our discovery episode. We can make medical kits in here. Uh, we can make cubic zirconia once we get zirconium, and then we can also make a bunch of, you know, pharmaceutical types of things. So these are more... Um, like uh, boosters, and these are more like, well, they're all boosters, but these, I think these might have like negative effects too or something. I'm not sure. I haven't really messed much with those things. Okay, so that is done. So we have all of the appliances set up in the habitat, and I'm feeling pretty good about things. So, gas. We need gas. Yeah, I know. You guys are laughing. So, um, and we want to fix up the rover. The, let's go ahead and just fix the rover first. But we're not going to be able to take it anywhere until we get the actual fuel for it. So let's go down here and see what we're going to need. Um, so if yeah, if it says dismantle, that means it's actually uh, already in place. So let's press F to begin repairs. Okay, so what we have to basically repair is the green stuff. Uh, so to do the wheel, we need rubber. Okay, so that one's done. We have to repair the strut here, which requires a circuit board. Okay, this we can salvage. See how fast this tool is, you guys, though? It's just a beast. Okay, so this requires brass and duralumin, which we have. Rubber for this guy. Um, blocked by wreckage. Oh, yeah, we got to get rid of that. Okay. That fixes that wheel, and then the rover axle. Actually, this is this is actually repaired, even though it doesn't look like it. So all we have to do is get let's get this axle fixed. Yeah, so we're gonna need for the rover strut here. We're gonna need a circuit board, and I think we're gonna need a one over here too, right? Blocked by wreckage. What wreckage is blocking you? Uh, oh, yeah, something just said salvageable. Wrecked rover strut. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so you have to get all the stuff out of the way. Okay, so we, we basically need two circuit boards to finish repairing this. Let's go get it. Okay, so we got our two circuit boards. So let's repair this. And this. Okay, what's still missing? Uh, oh, there's something over here. Okay, what's this? There we go. All right. Look at that, man. We repaired the rover. Awesome. We now have a vehicle. Only problem is we have no fuel for it. So, that's the next thing we're going to have to do, is get some fuel for it. Um, so, it requires hydrazine. And so, that means we need hydrogen and we need nitrogen. We have a hydrogen vent not too far from the base here. So, we're going to go get a bunch of that and fill up our tank. Our gas tank. This big one here, <coughs> excuse me, here that we just made. Um, and then we're going to have to trek over. Hopefully this will be the last time we have to make an, a, a big overland trip. He knows we're coming for him. He did. 
um, to get the nitrogen. And it's not going to be, it's not too far. It's over in the blood force, which is off to the west. So it's not super far away, but, you know, far enough, right? Far enough. Let's repair stuff here while I'm thinking about it. And uh, I don't know if this needs repair or not. Looks like it might have need just just a little tap. Okay, let's get all of our ores and ingots put away for the moment. Oh, we forgot to consolidate our water. Okay, let's do that next, and then we'll go get the gases. So I have a bunch of water jars out here, too. That's one thing of hydrogen that I got off camera. Uh, take all. And we got these as well. I think that's it. No, goodness gracious, we got a lot of water. That's all from looting. Yeah, let's grab that one too. These are barrels that we're going to need for gas. Okay, so we're going to go over here. Make sure there's no monsters nearby because we have to temporarily disarm ourselves okay okay so we're gonna put all these water jars on our toolbar and then we just basically select the first one and we hold down the F key and use the mouse wheel to go all the way across the toolbar like this Okay, and then it's basically just wash, rinse, and repeat. You just put the next group of water jars down. And again, when you're doing this, be careful because, if, I mean, if you're exposed like we currently are because, you know, you don't have any of your weapons on your uh, toolbar. All right, we've already filled this tank up, um, but what we're going to do now, because we still have some water here, is we're going to take these and I hear a monster. Oh, it's just you. Well, you can still bite, though. All right, let's get our... I'll harvest him later. Or, or I won't. So, yeah, I mean, we could even do with two tanks, but basically what I'm going to do now is, as you can imagine, is we're going to fill these up by pressing G this time. Like so, right? And then if we go um, get some more partials... That all the rest of it? No, there's one up here. Okay, and then we're going to add these. There we go. And we have, so we have 96 water in there. And we have uh, five, yeah, five full water. So we've basically consolidated all of our water. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, we'll put the tape there, whoops, and that there. Okay, so that's how you do it. You need a tank, and then you just dump everything in, and then fill the half, you know, the partials back up until everything is consolidated. Okay, so for the water that is con uh, that's full, we're going to keep one of them with us so we have something to drink when we're out and about. The rest of them I'm going to put in here, and we'll use them to cook more meat stew as we, you know, continue to accumulate more meat. All right. The rest of these empties we're going to use for hydrazine. So we're going to take those back outside. And we're going to temporarily just store them in these chests here.
Okay, let's grab this hydrogen. And let's also grab all of the other barrels that we currently have. Uh, those guys should actually be inside, but that's all right. Worry about that later. So barrels, of course, you can find in, in loot, and you can also make them out of scrap barrels if you need to in the workbench. So these scrap barrels here we could turn into normal bar barrels over here um, with scrap metal and makeshift patch tape. But we already have plenty of barrels just from what we have. So let's take this hydrogen and we're going to just drop that off in um, in here. So add contents. But as you can see, it works the same exact way that it does with the liquid. You just F to fill, G to extract. Okay, let's go get a load of hydrogen first. We'll come back, load up our, our tank here, and then we're going to go a little further to get nitrogen. So the hydrogen is just kind of right over here to the west, not too terribly far away. And again, this should be the last time we have to do this on foot. Then in the future, when we have to go get anything, gas, ores, whatever, we'll take the rover with us. But the first time, we've got to make the fuel so we can actually drive the rover. Okay, so let's see. Where is that vent? I think it's not too far uh, away. I have to think about it for a second. I think it might be over this way. It was down like in a little crater... I saw it the other day and I said, oh, there's some hydrogen really close by. Don't forget where it is. And guess what? <laughs> I don't remember where it is. Um, let's go this way. All right, guys, change of plans. Um, I must, I either missed where I thought that hyd hydrogen was near the base, which is probably the case, um, or I'm confused and um, I'm thinking about a different playthrough. But anyway, there's hydrogen here in this valley. Uh, I, I call this Uranium Valley because it's got uranium all over the place. It's the only place you can find uranium other than, you know, from the meteorites itself. Um, and a crab always spawns here, as you can see, and usually some skeletons. But there's a hydrogen vent uh, right here. Come here. I think I was hitting him in the tail or something. I don't know. Okay, so uh, I was going to do one full load of hydrogen, take it back. One full load of nitrogen, take it back. But since we're really close to the nitrogen, too, we're going to basically do... Um, it, it's basically a two-to-one ratio. So two hydrogen to one nitrogen. So we're going to try and divide it up as close as possible uh, to that situation. So let's see. We've got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 16... 17 barrels okay so we're going to basically fill like 11 ish with hydrogen um actually no we have hydrogen back a little bit of hydrogen back at the base too so 10 let's do 10 hydrogen and we'll do the rest nitrogen that'll be pretty close okay so let's make sure all of the monsters are killed because again we have to take all of our stuff off our tool but i think we're okay for the moment and by the way, if this is the first time you're seeing this. Hydrogen is the yellow gas on the map. Okay, so let's see. We said 10. We're going to do 10 tanks of, of hydrogen. And just like before, you just step up to it, press and hold the F key, and use your mouse wheel to scroll across your hot part. Okay, and then we're going to put, see, we just did six yet, so let's do four more hydrogens. And we managed to get it all. So eventually, um, probably within the next barrel or two, we would have exhausted this vent, and then you have to wait for... Oh, I don't know, 
I mean, for it to fully recharge, probably at least, I'd say, a couple minutes in real life. Um, and then you can, you know, then you can harvest it again. So just be aware of that if you're planning on getting, like, a whole mess of this. Okay, let's put our... Um, let's put our, our stuff back on because we have to go in over into the next area by the blood leaf forest. And that's where we're going to get the nitrogen. And there's th our three... Uh, excuse me, there's three nitrogen vents over there. Okay, let's go. So a lot of, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys in this video, I know I have in past series, but a lot of people will actually set up a gas station in this area because you have the hydrogen vent there and the nitrogen vents here. And what I mean by gas station is that the way the game works is if you fill up a liquid tank with hydrazine and then drive near it, the game will automatically refill your tanks on your vehicle, which is kind of neat. Um, so, you know, you can set up like a little gas depot type of thing here, come over here, you know, and get it all filled up and then just stop by to fill up on your thing. But I like to do that back at the base because that's where I park everything. So, all right, let's go back into here and you guys pretty much know the drill. We're just going to put all these barrels, um, on our toolbar and we're going to bring home seven barrels of nitrogen. Let's do it. Wow, he's kind of a creepy looking guy. Flying Skelepod. Interesting. Okay, we are home. So, what we're going to do is go over to the Kim station. And, um... We have to have... Okay, we have to have hydrogen and nitrogen, which we do, of course. And we have to have glass containers also in our inventory. So let's put a couple of these things away. I did a little bit of salvaging. Uh, when I was out and about, we got a whole bunch more meat, too, because I killed a couple of colossals and a few crab monsters. Let's put all the scrap in here. And we've got... Uh, eight scrap rubber and two wires so we can turn those into uh, rubber real rubber and real wires in here a little bit of extra leather that I got off that flying creature that we killed and uh, all right so let's see we need the jars so let's take all of these and then we just go up to the Kim station and we make hydrazine. And then we'll take this, put these in the rover, and then I'll make another batch and carry them in the rover, and then uh, we'll be golden. While we're waiting for this, let's do some points. We, we have some more points now uh, from being out and about. So I've got two stat points. Let's go uh, strength one, and let's go stamina one this time. Now we're looking to finish up uh, craft higher health and engineering so we can't get that last point let's get uh, gun durability up there and decrease suit and there we go we are finished with the combat tree ladies and gentlemen and we're finished with the science tree we just have one more engineering point to get and then we're done okay and then the rest of these points just accumulate and they're worthless <laughs> um all right let's take a look here um here Okay, so the one thing about this um, that kind of sucks is that there's only three outputs. So you do have to, if you you know, if you queue up more than three items of whatever happens to be, you have to sit here and pull them out, or the, or it just gets backed up. All right, that's enough for us to get the um, rover fueled up, or at least enough to drive it over here. After we deal with these dudes. So, like everything else that's liquid and gas in the game, you have to put everything on your toolbar. You know, we didn't double check and make sure there weren't any enemies nearby. I think we're good to go. Okay.
and then you just come up to here and this time it's B to refuel the vehicle and you can't you have to actually tap the B button each time you can't just hold it down why we can hold it down on everything else and not this I don't know but that's the way it works and you can see the little blue line underneath where it says Rover uh, starting to to fill up okay so let's go here and grab enough to get this completely topped off and then like I said I'm gonna make a whole nother batch or at least as much as I can with the gas that I have left to have spare fuel because you, you always want to you know carry spare fuel around because it runs out it doesn't run out super fast it unless they fix it it runs out way too fast on the on the hover uh, the hover bike thing uh, but on this it's 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 about reasonable I would say um, but that, you know, that is to say it can still run out. And here is the Rover, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pretty decent first vehicle. has no defenses on it, but it does a pretty good job on hills. I mean, you can take some pretty gnarly hills with this. Uh, you can't go, like, up a, a steep vertical face with it, but, I mean, it can get around pretty good. And it has um, enough storage on it to where um, if we go G to open inventory. It's not a huge storage, but I mean, certainly enough to go around and, and gather up a whole bunch of ore or salvage so you don't have to carry everything in your own inventory. So yeah, we got ourselves the rover finally. And we're moving up in the world, guys. We are moving up in the world. It does get glitched out on creatures. I wish you could run over creatures and just squash them, but unfortunately, even the smallest bugs can flip this thing on its side. It's really weird, but it's just the way it works. All right, so let's park our rover here. I am so glad that we finally got this thing going because it's going to mean I don't have to run around all over God's green earth, uh, or in this case, brown moon. Uh, oh, wow, lag spike city. I wonder what's going on with that. All right, let's go into here, and I'm just going to put the extra fuel in here, but again, I'm going to make as much more as I can based upon the gas that we currently have, um, which is none. Well, we do have one more thing of hydrogen in the tank, so we'll grab that out. We'll be able to make it a, a little bit more. And uh, what in the hell is going on with the lag spike all of a sudden? Yeah, this game does that sometimes. All right, let's go over here and get a barrel on our toolbar, and we're going to extract the hydrogen back out of here that we put in here earlier. And you can see a full barrel fills these tanks up at 7%. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're trying to figure uh, figure stuff out there. Okay. So now we can make a little bit more hydrazine. Um, basically one more, I think, right? Yeah, just one more. Okay. Yeah, meteorites coming down. Now we're going to store the rest of this nitrogen in here for now in fact I'm going to store all of the barrels in here and I'm going to get in the rover and look around for that that closer hydrogen vent that I think is around and I might like I said I might be mistaken it might not be around at all I might just be thinking of a different playthrough I can't tell but at least I can start looking around for it now in the rover and not on foot which is going to be great got so many containers a lot of times what I'll do is I'll set up a depository which is like a 60 slot container just to, uh, or 60 slot storage just to store the containers because you get so much of them and they start to become kind of a pain in the butt after a while but I just you know I hate to throw stuff away you really do sometimes you kind of have to but all right so we have enough fuel you know to to fill the tank back up maybe a little less than half so that, you know, that's good enough for us to go out and about and start doing our thing. And if we ran out of fuel completely, we'd have enough to at least get back to the base and then some. All right, all right you guys. Uh, that is it for this episode. I think we're going to wrap things up here. So let's talk about what's going to happen next. Um, I am going to lag like hell, first of all, okay? And um, then after we're done lagging like hell. And then in the next episode, we're going to make the barracks. And if all goes well... Um, maybe we can even get the biodome done in the next episode. I would really like to do that so we can really start making the good food. And we're gonna try uh, we're gonna try this one here and I'm hoping that this stone does not prevent us from putting a grow bin here. If it does, then it does and we're one short and you know we'll set up another biodome later if we have to or whatever. So anyway, all right, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. leave a comment share the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.